Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity Podcast. Hello and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. Today I have an amazing guest. Brian Page, author, CEO, passivepreneur, and the director of an amazing show, House Hackers. So happy to have you here, Brian. How are you? Thank you. Good to be here. Good to to talk to you again. Yes, I am so excited to finally have you on my show. I had the awesome opportunity to meet Brian while we're at the Wealth Accelerator event, um, finding new ways to invest. So he's a a real... um, you know, important piece to giving entrepreneurs like ourselves these opportunities to create passive income. So let's talk about you, Brian. So I want to go way back for the audience because I want them to like really understand and get to know you as, you know, that um, kind of self-made, you know, millionaire, passivepreneur and author who's delivering amazing opportunities to the market space. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about your humble beginnings. Where are you from? You know, maybe um, early insights in your career when you knew that, um, you know, you were like the owner of your own destiny. Yeah, so um, I grew up uh, moving my entire life. In fact, I moved, my family moved us around 23 times before I was in middle school. So oh, wow. I don't know what it was, but my, I guess my father had gypsy blood, but we, we were always moving. My father was a um, uh, interim pastor. So he would take churches temporarily, or we would work, move for my mom's work. She was a nurse. And so we were always on, on the move and, and we never stayed anywhere very long. And uh, I didn't know any different. I just thought that was the way everybody lived and I actually thought it was kind of an adventure. It was fun, but we also had very little money. I mean, we were very, very, very poor when I grew up. Uh, and even homeless for a couple different times. That oh, wow. I rely on strangers and live with, with uh, friends and that kind of stuff. So it was a very um, humble upbringing. And it, I think it formed a lot of what I came to believe about money uh, and kind of set me on my path. Yes, that burning desire to never feel like that again, probably, right? Yes. Yeah, I, well, I, mean, <laughs> I just knew that my parents, you know, they were always fighting about money, not having money. Um, and uh, And I just at a very young age, I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, but one day I'm going to, I'm going to be rich and I'm going to make sure I have enough money to take care of myself and take care of my family and all that kind of thing. And that kind of was something that from a very, uh, very young age, I decided I was, I wanted to be wealthy. That's awesome. Because a lot of our childhood uh, money wounds are developed back then. And until we decide we want to change out of belief about how we feel about money, then we kind of stay stuck in that. So that's an important yeah. Um, you know, to know that you felt that at a very young age and very driven to like be successful. So let's talk about that because I know that your parents also drove you to like, you know, do the, you know, typical bachelor's degree, get yeah. a corporate job, kind of follow suit of the, you know, the, um, the general matrix. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So my father, you know, he told me when I was coming up through high school, he said, you're going to have to go get a degree. I don't care what kind of degree you get or what college you go to, but you've got to go to school. So I didn't know what I was going to do, honestly. And I I struggled all through college because even by the time I had to choose a major, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I did did graduate from college um, barely, but I graduated with a leisure studies degree, which is actually an an actual degree (laughs) Um, to go into the leisure industry. So, um, so my my, my former, uh, my fellow students wanted to go work for Disney World or go work for resorts or be river river raft guides in Colorado. You know, all the kinds of things that you don't need a college degree for. That's yeah. what they wanted to go do. And so I got a degree in that uh, just so I could check the box and get out of school and mostly just goofed off and, and played through college and uh, didn't take it too seriously because um, I didn't think it was going to be part of my future. And uh, and that was kind of, I did it to kind of, you know, appease my parents. And yeah. I, actually don't, I don't regret it because it was some of the best years of my life, but certainly mm-hmm. didn't give me the education that I needed to become wealthy. 
Yeah. And so that's another thing. I mean, with, with having our audience, a lot of them are like college educated, you know, and that they, they did follow suit as well, but maybe like the level of um, happiness and fulfillment, you know, kind of getting into a degree that you don't really want to practice. So finding your creative entrepreneurial, um, you know, success during that happens at times because of the pressure and just the not really wanting to be there so let's see so I think you were saying that you did like have a bunch of hustles when back in the day when you were a student try to help like keep ends meeting and like getting out here yeah I did yeah I was always I was always into something you know I, I I wanted to be an entrepreneur I was always trying different things to make money some of those things did not work at all and I and I lost my shirt other times um I I would make money, you know, I flipped properties for a little while in real estate. I flipped cars, I used to buy them and fix them up and sell them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got into, um, I started a landscaping company one time and um, uh, it was working out okay until all of my equipment got stolen, uh, literally the <laughs> trailer and all the equipment. It was actually the best thing that ever happened to me because it, it ended that career very fast. And I'm glad that I'm not still out today, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing back breaking work in yards and stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a, it was a blessing, you know, cause it's, uh, it was tough work and, and um, yeah, so I was always trying something. I was always trying to find something to keep me out of a job. I was, I was willing to do anything so long as I didn't have to go work for somebody else. So you definitely had that fire earlier on in life. So it's not necessarily like, don't start a side hustle. Cause I think to get to where you are, you had to go through those levels and those steps, but that should not be the ultimate goal, right? Like there are so many easier ways to make money other than leveraging your time for dollars, right? So let's yeah. talk about that because your book says a lot about that. Yes. Um, you know, and that that's key to the growth of a lot of entrepreneurs or passivepreneurs now. Your yeah. your amazing passivepreneur opportunities that you've brought to the forefront um, have given a lot of people a mm-hmm. lot faster track wealth building, um, you know, and even like generational wealth by using yes. the tools that you kind of stumbled upon while in those days, right? When you were in mm-hmm. school or when you were just fresh trying to like grasp and find out what it is that, yeah. you know, it is that you want to be doing. So what, what, what was that when you finally had that light bulb moment where you're like, you went from that, I'm leveraging my time for dollars into, um, I'm an investor. Well, you know, I think a lot of people aspire to be an entrepreneur. They want to quit their job. And and uh, and those who actually make the leap and that work for themselves somewhat look down on people that have jobs. They're like, oh, well, I don't work for somebody else. I work for myself. But they're not willing to admit the fact that they might be working 70, 80 hours a week while the nine to fiver goes home at the end of the day and doesn't have to worry about the business because it's not his business or her business. So I think sometimes entrepreneurship is elevated above working nine to five when really what they have is a glorified job that they own. And so they're working more than anyone else. They they're willing to work 80 hours a week for themselves to avoid the 40 hours a week for somebody else. And that's great. And that they can make a lot of money as an entrepreneur, but the problem with it is that, you know, we live in hustle culture, you know, Gary V says, you know, hustle your face off. I work when you sleep, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the wrong message because the message is that hard work by itself and for its own sake is somehow a good thing. And I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of other things you could do with your life other than just working your ass off all the time. Uh, you could do the things that you really want to do with your life, the things that, you, that, that light you up. Now, some people that is working, but a lot of people it's not. A lot of people yeah. know what they would do if they had all the time in the world. They just can't, they don't have the time to do it and they don't have the money to do it. So the only solution to hustling harder is to create cash flow, to create passive income. And cash flow can completely change your life. Cash flow is the name of the game. And I believe it's a much more uh, valuable way to spend your time than hustling for money, even if you make a lot of a lot of it. Because I hustled for most of my life, making a lot of money, and I never had freedom. I never had the time to even walk away for a minute from what I was doing. And so I want to teach people a new paradigm, which is to stop working for money and instead build assets that can create money for you, passive income for you. Yeah, that is so next level, Brian. You are so that is just like music to my ears because that's and it's, really- and it's not it's not just that you should never hustle okay that's not what right. i said there right. are there is a time to hustle but whatever you hustle and put your time into should only be for a limited amount of time and it should pay you disproportionately so like mm-hmm. writing a book is an enormous amount of effort I, I didn't i had no idea writing a book took that much effort but now it's done and guess what this book will exist forever and every time it sells i make a little royalty there's all kinds of ways in the book that i make money passively that i actually talk about in the book so this is a vehicle for me. I did it one time and it'll pay me again and again and again. 
So the longer I have this book, <clears throat> excuse me, for sale, the more I make per dollar, per hour invested in it. Yes. And that's a very different thing than hustling and just getting paid one time for what you do. And so that's what, that's kind of the thing I'm trying to teach. Totally. And that is a lot about what that book is talking about and your show. So let's, yeah. I'm going to, I'm actually going to go to your website right now because right. I think it's super important that people can see like the amazing opportunity. Not only will that book create wealth and have, it's another, um, you know, utility to create more income for mm -hmm. you, but it, you're also giving back. And so that's really about what the create clarity with charity podcast is about is that evolutionary entrepreneur that's saying, look, I busted knuckles in the field. I've been working on this for 20 years. I know what the pitfalls are. I know where the stumbling blocks are. And this is really the way that you need to go. And if people are willing enough and their ears are open enough, they can really get the, the gems of what will really create wealth. So let's talk about that because your okay. book <laughs> Is really, really, you know, a tool for people to generate um, yeah. massive amounts of wealth if they really want to follow a system. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, so the book is just one of many vehicles. I've, I've got dozens of different passive income vehicles. Um, <clears throat> there's basically three ways that you can get, get passive income vehicles. You can buy them. So that, think about Robert Kiyosaki. He talks about buying assets. Rich people buy assets. Poor and middle class, you know, uh, own liabilities. So you can go buy real estate. You can go buy a business and it generates cash flow immediately. Basically. And let's talk about Robert really quick, just because this is a key Absolutely. part. Cause I know a lot of us do this, like just go to Barnes and Noble, go to the library. And we just like get, look at yeah. all these successful people that wrote books. And that was literally, I think the gateway for you, right? It was. In fact, I got a whole section over here. Uh, rich dad section of my library. I, I got a big library here. So all a whole section, just on rich dad. And that yeah. changed my life, understanding what assets were and how I could go buy assets. But uh, and actually, I have a I have a interview coming up soon in, in person with Robert Kiyosaki. That happened since last. Oh, time. lucky so, you! Very excited He's to go hero. sit down with sit down with one of my heroes and talk to him and interview him. But um, one of the things he teaches is only one small piece of the pie. Okay, because we live in a creator economy now, so you can actually create assets from nothing. You don't have to go buy assets. You don't have to go buy hard assets like real estate or apartment buildings. You can actually create assets where none existed before. For example, online courses, digital products, books, eBooks. There's a million mm. of things you can create out of nothing for very, very little money that can generate passive income. So you can create things. You can also control assets that you don't own. So one of the things, the show that you just showed there, the house hackers, yeah. house hacking, house hacking is, a, is, a, is just my words for using properties you don't own ethically and legally from the owner, putting them on home sharing sites like Airbnb and tripling the income. And I learned how to do that years ago. And I learned how to automate it so I didn't spend any time on it. It was all automated and being managed by other people, my teams, and to create passive income from properties I didn't own. So that's kind of what I teach is teach people how to own, create, and control assets. And all, there's, there's many different ways to do that, but you don't have to have a lot of money to go own and buy properties and buy businesses and that kind of thing. Um, and, and you're talking about arbitrage, right? That's, yeah, yeah, arbitrage, yep, yeah, arbitrage. arbitrage. And, it, and that and led into another business. So once I learned how to do this, Everybody started approaching me. This was years ago. I was one of the first people to ever teach it. Um, people started approaching me and saying, how do I do what you're doing? And I created a course, put the course online with a webinar. A webinar just teaches automatically, you know, plays automatically without me uh, being involved. And that to this day still, you know, every week I make money from that course that I, uh, a webinar that I created years ago. And I just spend a little time updating it every six months and uh, it still generates passive income for me. So yeah. This, it, we're talking millions of dollars, you know, this is digital this, assets, it's very yeah. lucrative. So digital assets, digital real estate. So that's the name of the game. So it's not just mm -hmm. the old paradigm of go buy a car wash, go buy uh, vending machines, go buy real estate, you know, play the monopoly game. There's mm -hmm. now we're now in a creator economy and we're in a sharing economy. Yes. So you need, you need to look at the opportunities that exist there as well. And that's what I dive into in the book. Yes. And it's so handy because that all those are the areas that are the most lucrative, you know, the luxury. Yeah, you know that as well. Yeah, yes. I mean, you're, you've got a podcast. I mean, your show and your podcast is a passive income vehicle because you can stop today if you wanted to and still have ads running and income mm -hmm. coming in on, on that asset that you created uh, or interviews that you created years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And the book and the magazine, the digital assets, anything online, that. the courses, that's like, I mean, that is key. And you're right. It's like leaving a legacy at the same time. So you can just keep building on it and building on it and building on it. So 
Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's exciting. So in your book, you talk about, you know, that that kind of mentorship through Robert Kiyosaki, through the books to help create these investment ideas and opportunities that you coin and like really put out in the market space to share with others. And that is amazing because, you know, yeah. a lot of people feel like don't don't share your secrets. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to stay like really tight lipped about everything. It's like, you know, proprietary. Like, I don't want anyone to steal it. Yeah. Right. No, I totally, I mean, I, I went through that a little bit. I was like, why do I want to share this with other people? But the interesting thing is that, you know, money, money goes to those who create value. It doesn't go to those who, who work the hardest. So I think that we're, you know, the old paradigm, the industrial age was, you know, you need to work hard. The harder you work, the more you make, because that's how you make money. You have to work hard. You got to go work for it. But now it's all about value creation. So you can create value irrespective of how much how much effort it takes you to create that value you can make money so if you help hundreds of people you can make thousands of dollars you help thousands of people you can make millions of dollars you help millions of people you can make billions of dollars you know like zuck yeah. or like you know jeff Bezos. exponential so it's all <laughs> based on how many people you bring value to directly affects how much money you make so the idea is if you have an opportunity to share something with a, with a bunch of people you share that value and you ask in exchange for something. For example, I'm going to ask everybody to go buy a copy of my book and the value I bring you hopefully it'd be worth more than the, what you spend on the book. And that's the idea of how you create wealth. It's just bring more value to more people. Yes. And as he's pitching the book, let's just, I mean, we're doing this a little bit before, but we're going to keep bringing it back up. Brian yep. page slash book. Yep. Um, he has a really awesome um, landing page where you get these amazing bonuses. Like you could go to Barnes and Noble or you can go to Amazon, but you won't get this, this amazing package. Do you want to tell it's us the same it? price? Okay. It's the same price on Amazon, same price here. It's the like same price. Okay. I don't charge any different, but if you go here and get the book, you're going to get the uh, audio book, uh, first few chapters, audio book, which isn't even available yet. Nobody has it on Amazon, no, no, and nowhere else. You get a PDF download and you get uh, a workshop as well. So there's a bunch of things that I give you on there just for getting one copy of the book. And uh, um, yeah, and, and it's I just kind of walk you through the, you know, take you down the rabbit hole, so to speak, not just to what I've been doing, but what other people like me are doing. There's a whole bunch of passive entrepreneurs that are doing things I've never even considered. You've met some of them, Charity. They're yeah. doing things that I've never done before, but there's a, it's kind of an underground class of people that are doing these really fascinating things. And they're not the traditional entrepreneurs that you think of. Uh, yeah, these people, these people live the life they're, you know, they're jet set, they got plenty of money, plenty of time, and they get to play and do the things they want to do in life. And, uh, and that's ultimately, I think what all of us, and they're doing. still following your key framework. So that's the thing, they're, still like, following they're the doing framework, seven, yeah. eight figures, and they still, this Brian Page has yeah. the magic framework, right? Because you have kind of mastered the art of delivering um, the programming and yeah. the keys, because you did ride the roller coaster of entrepreneurship from when you're in college to learning at the bookstore from your it real was fun. I mean, it taught me a lot and it was great. And, but it was also a lot, it was so hard. It was like, you know, at yeah. a certain point you're like, okay, how many years more or decades more do I want to do of this? Even though I'm making good living at it, do I want to keep doing, is this what I dreamt of? Like, is this what I dreamt of? And I, I had in the book, I talk about the Powerball question. There's a chapter called the Powerball question, which is if you woke up tomorrow winning, winning the Powerball, let's say it's $200 million, I'm at 300 million. I can't keep up anymore what it is. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of billions of dollars you've won tomorrow at the Powerball. Would you go into work tomorrow? Would right. you go back in to work for that boss? Or would you go in and do your business? Or would you just shut it down? And be like, I don't, I don't need my business anymore. And if yeah. the answer is no, you would not go in and do the same thing tomorrow. That means that you need passive income because you should be able to go do the things you want to do. We're, you know, not related to whether or not they make money. Like you might love to play golf, but you're never going to be pro, but you can't play golf because you don't have the time. You don't have the time right. to go do the things you want to do, travel the world with your family, whatever it may be, um, because you don't have a source that's independent of you. And so yeah. that's what I'm trying to get people to is like, be honest with yourself. How would you spend your time if money was not a consideration anymore? Because you had a yeah. source. And that's what I think most people um, very few people actually have that. And that's what I want to help people do. And a lot of times people have to hit that rock bottom to be like, this isn't my passion. I'm burnt out. I freaking hate this. Oh, job. Yeah. Like and it's just over broke. I'm so over it. Right. It's, it's like, a, it's like a musician. I know a lot of people <laughs> want to be musicians and they, they get into the whole scene. They go to Nashville, they try to do a record whatever. And by the time they come out of it, they're so jaded. They're like, man, I'm just one of like a hundred thousand talented people in that city. I'm never going to make a break. I, I don't even like music anymore. And they, <laughs> 
they, they did it backwards, okay? Because they wanted to, some people, they want to be stars. I get it. But some people, they just love music. They love to play. They, they feel like that's their passion in life, just to sing or play. And they mm -hmm. should be able to just do that and not make it pay. And the idea that because you have passion for something, that it you, you deserve to make money at it. You deserve to make a lot of money at it is just wrong thinking because you might not have the talent for it. I'm sorry. You might not have the, you know, you look at American Idol, all the people that go on American Idol think they're talented. They're just not, uh, mm -hmm. they're deluded, but they think they should be rewarded for being mediocre. But, but it doesn't matter if you're good or not good. If you love doing it, the yeah. problem is most people are trying to make their passion pay. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a recipe that's just for disaster for most people because most people will never get to that point with their, with their, their passion. So what I talk wow. about in the book is you don't have to do any, you don't have to do something you're passionate about. Just find something that makes money, like yeah. find something that ethically makes money. That is your source. It doesn't have to be something you particularly are not all that fascinated by, but it'll be your source so that you can go then do your passions and not care if they pay or not. So you know, let's talk about that. So people yeah. are really clear about what it is we were talking about. Passivepreneurism. Okay. What? People are like, hmm, okay. Airbnb. Okay. Um, but you go into like 300 ways yeah. to make passive income. And it's kind of like a new thought. So let's talk about some of those. Okay. Like, you said, like you mentioned, digital courses, multifamily, right? In so this I'll era, in this COVID yeah. saturated market space where everything is uncertain, what yeah. are like the top three that you would think that somebody would need to invest in right now? Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to skip, I'm not going to spend too much time on assets that you buy. Cause we all know what those are. You can buy dividend stocks and they pay you with, you know, a little bit yeah. of income. You can buy commercial real estate, residential, real yeah, estate, non-traditional, right? Automated businesses like parking lots, vending machines, laundromats, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. those are things where you buy. Okay. But we're not going to spend too much time there because everybody talks about that. And Kiyosaki does a great job of talking about that. The, the second would be assets that you create. Okay. So assets that you create, for example, an online course, um, blogging, you can get a blog. That, I mean, there are people who make a tremendous amount of money with blogging. Uh, you can write an ebook one time, sell it over and over and over again through an automated funnel. You can create an app or an Alexa skill. Both of those can pay you every time somebody downloads that app. You can mm -hmm. uh, you can take photography and put it on photography sites where people will buy the the right to that image, and you can make money uh, passively from, from what you create. Um, you can do uh, create a software. I created a software. I mean, software is a generous word for it. It's really just a glorified cal calculator that can calculate the profitability of any short-term rental with all the different variables taken into place. I think mm -hmm. I spent, I don't know, $1,200 to have it coded, cool, beautiful interface or whatever. And that one uh, piece of software that I paid $1,200 for years ago has made hundreds of thousands of dollars passively. Uh, it's just wow. one little product that I sell for $47 and people buy it and it they love it. And it does, uh, you know, it meets a need that somebody has. So that's another perfect mm -hmm. example, software. Um, yeah. You can... Uh, uh, you can do membership sites where people will join. Uh, you can actually take a Facebook group and create a membership site out of it. People will pay mm -hmm. to be in the Facebook group if it has enough high enough value. So those are all examples of creating assets. Okay. And I don't, yes. I know I went fast there, but there's a million and one things you can create. A lot of them are digital. A lot of them are online, but mm -hmm. then there's controlling assets. And that would, example, that would be doing short-term rentals with properties that you don't own. You're controlling someone else's uh, properties. Affiliate marketing is where you get to sell products you didn't create or you don't own them. You just get to control the, uh, the, the, the eyeballs, basically. Mm -hmm. Drop shipping, uh, private labeling. You know, when you go buy something on Amazon, Amazon doesn't actually have a warehouse. Or, or, I'm sorry, it doesn't have a, uh, um, a factory where they crank out these widgets. They simply stamp their name on somebody else's products. Yeah. And a lot of the beauty things you buy, a lot of sunglasses you buy, they're all made by some other manufacturer you've never heard of. Um, and then the brand name is stamped on there and they sell it. You can do the same thing. You can make up, you know, charity makeup line if you wanted to, and it's somebody yeah. else's makeup. So you can do <laughs> all that stuff and you're essentially, you're taking assets that you didn't create. And sometimes you don't even own them. You're not even warehousing them. And they're being shipped from the warehouse straight to your customer. Yeah, so gotcha. there's, I mean, there's a million and one different ways, but the idea here is that that most of what's available now is because of technology it didn't even exist 20, 30 years ago. None of this stuff existed. Um, yeah. So now there's a million and one ways to do it. Um, and just to create, you know, the limitation is your create creativity. Yes. And for a newbie, somebody who's, you know, really wanting to start a business, but they like, I don't have a trade. I don't have a skill. I don't have a product. Yeah. Like that keeps, keeps a lot of people stuck because they oh, don't I, have I get housing, it, yeah. manufacturing. Right. So for the new, the newbies out there that can really gain a lot from the, from you right now yeah. to, to, to list out all those things. What do you think the average amount of time for somebody who's 
who's really driven and ready to jump ship in their nine to five, and they want to start a passive income business, but let's say, let's use Amazon, for example, a dropship store or, yeah. or a Facebook fulfillment, a Amazon fulfillment store. Yeah. What do you think is the average for somebody that's jumping into this passivepreneur game that they finally yeah. see return on their investment? Well, I, I talk about this in the book. The most important thing is not so much which vehicle you choose, because there's so many, there's not just one, there's, there's hundreds that you could choose. You want to make sure that it's one that actually is legit and it works. Uh, it's worked for lots and lots of people. Uh, but once you choose one, you want to stick with that one vehicle until you get to the point where it's making you about 150% more than you, your take-home pay if you're working for somebody else, okay? So yes. if you're making 50 grand a year and you want to be able to quit that job, you need to make 75K a year from your first vehicle before you start jumping ship and or being distracted by another vehicle, okay? So right. I'm a little biased because for me, my whole life changed when I learned about Airbnb and I've helped hundreds, if not thousands of people to be able to go from zero to re replacing their income on their job in sometimes 90 days or six months, like very, very fast. Very, so, very fast. So I think it's super easy to do because you only need a handful of properties, three, four, five, six properties, you can replace your income. Um, and, and you're not owning the property. And it's just super elegant way to do that. So that's one of the things I love teaching people and I've done um, um, kind of got been known for that. Yes. But, but there's other ways, you know, I mean, I got into um, creating courses online because I learned about a guy named Russell Brunson teaches about how to make money online. And I went to a conference. And when I got to the conference, there were like thousands of people there. And all the people I was meeting around me were like making millions of dollars online. I was like, how is this possible? Like, this is unbelievable. Like, I was just random people that would have no reason to lie to me or like, yeah, I made them. Were you on stage with him last week? Uh, no, I was not. Oh, okay. No, no. I've been In on Florida? stage. Uh, no, 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 I was not. I was there, but I wasn't. On stage. Oh, you were there. Okay, cool. I was like, I, I mean, I just yeah. remember seeing the smoke. So we just had a big event that. with Russell. We just had a big oh, event. With Russell, yeah. Um, yeah, because so, he's key. And that's, I mean, his he has a lot of passive income opportunities. Yeah, so he talks about this. He talks about the creator, the, how, to, how to become a creator. He doesn't call it that, but he basically talks about how to become a creator and make create, mm -hmm. become an expert in something. But the beautiful mm -hmm. thing is you don't need to be an expert in the sense that you've got a PhD. You, if you study something long enough, you study for the next 30 days, one topic, like, I don't know how to train your parrot, you know, and you become, you're going to know more than 99.9% .9 of the population. And so technically you are an expert compared to them. You could teach them what you just learned. Mm -hmm. I mean, even better, you could teach them if you actually applied what you learned to, a you know, teaching a parrot. And now you're actually an expert on how to, so that's what I did with Airbnb. I just taught what I was doing and, mm -hmm. uh, and people were getting results with it. So you don't and you have cookie to, cuttered it. The, the actually yeah. people don't realize that the inconsistency systems that do the same thing over and over and over again with the same yeah. result or greater results yeah. is really the ticket. And you found that a way to do that, that could transfer to others and create wealth. Oh yeah. Yeah, Which absolutely. Is. So I just follow the people that were smarter than me. I mean, people that are farther ahead of me. And I talk about this in the book too. You know, there's mastery and there's modeling. So, uh, you know, you've heard of this concept that you need to have 5,000 hours or 10,000 hours to become a master or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, that just sounds like too much work to me. I would rather <laughs> not try to master something and I'd rather just model somebody that's done it before. So I look yeah. at people that have done what I want to do and I model them as closely as I can. And I can get maybe nine tenths of the result without being a master in that thing. So, you know, people expect that I'm a master writer because I wrote a book or I uh, master it online marketing or funnels, but I've hired amazing people to help me with some of those things, you know? And yeah. uh, actually I did, I did write the book, but I have an amazing editor. It's helped me edit, edit the book and make it even better. But, um, but that's the idea is that you model people that have done what you want to do before and just follow them as closely as you can. And that's what I'm trying to do is to model the path to passive income for as many people as I can. Yes. And once again, I mean, he's done an amazing job and it's giving you all out there an opportunity to get this book that has some of the major frameworks that it takes to start building that, you know, generational wealth and, you know, to jump ship from the nine to five or really start working on your um, long term investment. So once again, visit Brian um, at, at Brian dot page book to it's not dot com. It's not yeah. .com. I was kind of disappointed that .com wasn't available. Um, the guy wouldn't sell me the website, but then I was like, oh, wait, there's a Brian dot page. That is brilliant. I got yeah. <laughs> the best website ever. So uh, I was happy. It is. It's that. really nice. And that's cool how it's like your name and then yeah. period page. Brian and that's dot like page literally the dot .com. So that's cool. So yeah, everyone don't get it twisted. It's Brian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah, and you could also check him out on his Instagram. 
He has so uh, many great videos, a lot of stuff on influence, um, coaching, lifestyle, Airbnb, the book. Um, he has a great following. Um, his you they're filled with value. His feeds has all these great inspirational quotes and things. Well, and I, talk, I talk about some of this stuff in here, so you guys can check out some of the free content where I talk about, um, you know, this whole this whole uh, passivepreneur thing. And and you know, most people are just they're just confused. They don't know really what to do. They don't know how to get started, uh, yeah. and they just they don't know that there might be a better way. You know, because they're just kind of like I was. I was just like I was busy. I was making some money. I was having success, success with what I was doing, mm -hmm. but ultimately I just went home at the end of every week exhausted. Um, and, and I, I was more exhausted than when I had a job where I actually went home at the end of the, like I, I, I joke about this with some of my entrepreneur friends. I'm like, don't you envy some of your employees that get to go home at five and they never think about work until the next day when they wake up mm -hmm. and go to work again. But we yeah. have a company to run and we're, we're like, we, it never stops for us. And, mm -hmm. and that was kind of the, uh, the genesis of like, wait a second, there's got to be a different way where I'm not actually having to do this. I can remove myself 100% um, from what I'm doing to actually make money. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of your quotes and your book and things is about creating wealth, but not necessarily measuring it by money. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, the very beginning of the book, I talk about how I define wealth. And I think that we need, we need to, as a society, redefine what it is to, 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 to be wealthy, because if wealth is only based on dollars, cents, and net worth, and, and not has nothing to do with any other element, then you know there's a lot of people that I think are not wealthy, although they have a big bank account. And they're not wealthy because they, they, they don't have any free choice. They don't have any free time. They don't have any health. You know, they don't have any of those things. So I, I, I redefine wealth as um, not just money or net worth, but passive income plus free time, plus free choice. So that means passive income that's not directly tied to your efforts. It means that you have free time to go enjoy the money that you have. We're not talking about like van life or couch surfing. We're talking, you can have a lot of money coming in passively and a lot of time, and you have the free choice to do whatever you want to do. So you're not tied. You're not a slave to your business. You're not a slave to somebody else. Um, you're not self-employed and you're not employed by somebody else. You are, you are unemployable. That's a totally different thing. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of how I define wealth is those three things, because I would rather have um, uh, a certain amount of money passively coming in every single month than 10 times more that I have to give up all my time and all my life for and get to the end of my life and be like, what just happened? Like, you know, you don't want it. The goal is not to die the richest man in the graveyard. You know, the, the goal is to enjoy your life and actually do things that are meaningful and spend it with the people that are mean that, that that are, you know, the people that you love and the people. That, yeah. And to be yeah, fulfilled and not make it all about the money. To be we fulfilled. are not our money. Yeah. You can't yeah, take that's it to the die, right? So that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, as Grant Cardone says, you know, you got to get your money right. And the thing is that what you notice about people that have their money right is money is not really a concern for them. They just don't, they don't even think about it because it's just like no. water. It's like, it's a tool, do you worry yeah. about water? Do you worry about the air you breathe? No, because it's abundant. It's everywhere. You have plenty of it. So when you get to a certain point, you'll be able to enjoy that peace that you have because you don't think about money. It's just, it's always there and it's always available and there's so much of it that you can't possibly spend it all. And that, that's the point that, you know, it, it, I want people to realize that that's possible. That's totally possible mm -hmm. to create that kind of wealth. And, and also to be able to, you know, call the shots on, on the life that you have without it passing you by. Cause I mean, it's such, such a brief life. I mean, it's over yeah. and, and you got to think about these things. I mean, these are deep things to think about, but they're very important. And that's some of the bigger questions that I pose in the book. Yes. And oh my gosh, your, your endorsements are amazing. I mean, <laughs> come on, you have all the greats, Dina Gassi, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, and my favorite, Kevin. I love Kevin. Yep. Yep. Original Shark, Muhammad Ali. Well, you are, I mean, they all know already how brilliant you are, Brian, and, and all this. Well, these, great these are, these are dear friends of mine, so they might be a little bit biased. A lot of these, <laughs> I, I, not all of them, but most of them are really good friends of mine and became good friends of mine. But the funny thing is I didn't know any of them when I started. I didn't, and nobody knew who I was. I wasn't <sighs> a quote, expert. I just, I just threw myself into it and I had to figure it out. And I, and I learned from a lot of great people ahead of me. And, and I, um, I modeled people, like I said, and, and it's uh -huh. just been an amazing journey. And, and now I want to help others, you know, to kind of find their own path. And there might, so, and you know, the Create Clarity of Charity book and podcast is all about mentors and getting great mentors, right? And you have literally like some of the top five right here that you are great friends with. So I know a lot of their, you know, inspiration and, and wise words have also rubbed off on you. And if you've done any of um, 
Grant Cardone or Ty or Dean's yeah. courses. I mean, yeah. they're golden, right? They're the yeah. ones, they, they kind of uh, put those opportunities at the forefront like 15, yeah. 20 years ago. And um, I mean, and it all started with you reading, you know, Whoops. in Barnes and Noble and getting that awesome real estate advice from Robert Kiyosaki. So on that note, who yeah, is like your inspirational quote? Like, do you have one or a mentor told you something one day that just always like left that light on? Uh, yeah, you know, I have recently been reintroduced to Jim Rohn, which Jim Rohn is one of the greatest, uh, you know, arguably probably the greatest personal development teacher. Uh, he was the per mm -hmm. personal mentor to Tony Robbins. Tony mm -hmm. went to work for his organization before he became, you know, the Tony Robbins. So Jim Rohn uh, has so many amazing quotes. The, the one that comes to mind recently is, uh, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Got and it. it's just like, yes. wow, okay, that, you know, yes. drops those kind of nuggets, which he's all about, like, radical uh, personal responsibility and taking responsibility for everything that happens to you in your life and, yes. and kind of looking at yourself, a hard look at yourself and what you need to work on and, and yes, stop, looking, own that. stop, own stop that. looking at everything outside you as an excuse as to why you're not succeeding. And um, mm -hmm. Jim Rohn is just amazing. And anybody can afford to go buy an old Jim Rohn book or go on Audible and, and, and mm -hmm. get his greatest works for, you know, 20 bucks or whatever. So I think books, you know, you can see I've got tons of books here. Books is by far the cheapest uh, and best investment you can make in yourself. Yes. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with mentors and coaching and all that kind of stuff, but still it all started with books. And I, I think that and I'm not just saying that because I have a book. I'm just literally. So what is the investment in the book? I don't see dollar signs anywhere. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so if you go down, you go down a little bit, scroll down, I'll show you. Uh, okay. So go down, uh, click uh, right there where it says Amazon, click the Amazon button. Okay. You buy an Amazon, for example, and it opens a new tab and you just go there to Amazon and you buy your uh, hardcover copy right there on oh, the right. Perfect. And then when you buy it, it'll give you a little receipt number and you go back over to the other tab <clears throat> that you just left. And that, uh, the other, uh, back to my website. Uh -huh. Sorry, other I wanted time. to get my book. Hold on. No, I yeah. Actually, I have the book right here. Okay. Like, there you go right, sure you go right back over and then you put in your receipt number. And that's oh, all you got do. it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that um, that's really quick, easy, 29 bucks. Yeah. You get all of, or was it 29? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's $28. You get all 20. these bonuses. You'll just have instant access. So you'll instantly start getting to, to listen to the audio book, the first few chapters. And they're not available. They're not on Amazon yet. I, I've recorded that myself in, in my office with my podcast mic here. So you get to immediately jump oh, nice. in and start listening to the book. And um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's, uh, it's going to help a lot of people. And it's definitely different. It's not something you probably read before. Uh, there's nothing quite out there quite like this that I know of. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, it really I mean, is a new wave of passiveprenuerism. Like you've coined yeah. that. That is what it is. People are like, mm -hmm. what is yeah. that? And so they can find out in this book, you guys, audience out there, if you want the nuggets, what's happening right now in this economy, in this challenging market space, and, and this uncertainty, passive income is key. And using the digital market space to do it is is probably the best advice we could give anyone. So um, I, I love the book, Brian. Congratulations on all your success with that. And everyone, don't forget to go to brian.page slash book or just his website and click on the book um, link or visit his Instagram, um, bpagester B -page yep. on Insta and check out his cool show. Also, that's on his um, House Hackers show.com self-produce so amazing if you want to get back into that airbnb arbitrage type of investment opportunities um and then his um endless amount of value on youtube so it's a uh, real inspiration brian you've really brought a lot to the nice. marketplace and i know all of us um passivepreneurs appreciate you and all your insight for bringing it to us so any last words of advice uh, you know, no, I think that, you know, I think knowledge, it all starts with knowledge. You can get the knowledge from books and, uh, but the most important thing, even beyond knowledge is, is applied knowledge, which is learning. Once yeah. you apply it and you actually take action on it, then you are learning something. And when you learn, that's when you grow and anything's possible. It's just a matter of getting the knowledge that you need, start applying it. And, um, uh, and hopefully this will be a good step for those who want to go in this direction. So thanks, Charity. I appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you so much, Brian. Everyone go check him out. Go check out Don't Start a Side Hustle. Do this instead. Woo All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
Have a wonderful day and we'll chat again soon. Bye. Bye.